Hello everyone. Before we get started, I'd like to give a shout out to one of my newest members, Andrew Palmer. Thank you for becoming a member and supporting the channels. Members get to see the thumbnail hours before the video premieres and they're also given shout outs in my videos. Let's get started with the problem. So today we are going to simplify a radical expression. We have the square root of 2 root 3 plus 2 minus the square root of root 3 minus root 2 and we're going to simplify this radical expression. Now, when I came up with this problem, I had a solution because that's how I came up with the problem. But that solution did not really satisfy me because they kind of looked a little artificial. So then I thought about another solution to this problem and I found another solution. And I'm going to share that with you first. So I'm going to be presenting two solutions and let's get started. So. Most of the time when we have a difference of sum of two radical expressions and a lot of times you're going to get conjugates, we call them something and then square both sides. So let's go ahead and call this expression x, even though we don't have that kind of conjugacy here, that's okay. I'm going to square both sides and let's see what happens after that. When, you know, this is kind of like an a minus b situation. When you square, it's going to be a squared minus 2ab plus b squared. So we're going to be getting 2 root 3 plus 2 but I'd like to write the, it as a squared plus b squared minus 2ab. Uh, it's just, I don't know, it's just cooler that way. And then I'll get the b squared like this and minus 2ab. So 2ab is kind of like two times the product of two radicals, which I can write under the same radical. So I can just go ahead and write it as a product of two expressions like this. And then later on, obviously, I'm going to simplify that, right? So this is equal to x squared. Here, the only thing that simplifies is nothing. Well, pretty much. Uh, 2 root 3 plus root 3 is going to simplify, but nothing cancels out. So this gives us 3 root 3. And then maybe I want to write the radical next, minus root 2. And then I have a plus 2, and then minus 2 times this expression. Now let's go ahead and expand it and see what happens. Because as it is, it doesn't really mean anything like I can't really square root that expression. But if I distribute, I have a higher chance. So if you multiply 2 root 3 by root 3, that's like 2 times 3, which is 6. And then 2 root 3 multiplied by negative root 2 is going to be 2 root 6. And then I get a 2 root 3 from here and minus 2 root 2. Now notice that there are no like terms. It's just going to stay like that. So here I have an expression that's kind of gigantic and kind of scary looking like. But don't worry. The key is simplifying what's under the radical. Because if you can then we're going to get uh, end up with a simple expression. So this is going to be my first method that I like better. And you're going to let me know, I'm pretty sure, that which method you like better. Okay, so what about the expression under the radical? Now, when I was thinking about an alternative solution to this problem, I looked at the expression inside the radical and how can I simplify this? It didn't occur to me right away, obviously, but then I saw something that would be super helpful. Sometimes people ask me like, how do you see these things? How do you expect everyone to see it? I don't expect everyone to see these things, right? I mean, you got to practice and after a while you start seeing things, but it takes time and practice. It's not easy. Okay. I hope uh, this makes sense. Anyways, this is what I saw. 6 minus 2 root 6 is not special, but 5 minus 2 root 6 is special. I'll tell you why in a little bit, but take a look at the other two expressions. 2 root 3 minus 2 root 2. Yes, I can take out a 2 there, and that gives me 2 times the quantity root 3 minus root 2. Is that significant? Yes, you'll see why in a little bit. Now, why did I say 5 minus 2 root 6 is special? Let me write it that way first, and then I'll tell you why. So I can write it as 5 minus 2 root 6, plus 1 obviously, because I have a 6 there, and then plus 2 times this expression. Now notice that this is under the radical, but don't worry about it for now. Let's go ahead and simplify this, and later on we can just write it under the radical and simplify appropriately, right? Okay, so we don't have to write the square root symbol every time. So what's so special about 5 minus 2 root 6? Well, here's the thing. And we get these expressions all the time. If you're dealing with radicals, you should know this. If you don't know this, hopefully after the video, you're going to know this thing. Okay, so 5 can be written as 3 plus 2, and 6 can be written as 3 times 2. Awesome. So what did we get? We got two numbers whose product is 6 and whose sum is 5. Awesome. Why is that awesome? Because now I can write this as 3 plus 2 minus 2 times root 3 times root 2. If this is still not very clear to you, I can just write it as square root of 3 squared 
minus 2 times square root of 3 times square root of 2 plus square root of 2 squared. And hopefully by this time it is clear to you now. Yes, you guessed it right. This is a perfect square, but with radicals. Awesome. So 5 minus 2 root 6, in other words, is actually square root of 3 minus square root of 2 quantity squared. If you square that expression, you'll know what I'm talking about. You'll get the same expression. So what is the big deal about it? Well, if you put it all together, then you get another nice expression. So we started off with a perfect square, and then I'm adding the two times that quantity, which I already told you at the beginning, and then plus one. I want the plus one to go at the end because that's part of my expression. And guess what? I, I have a perfect square, but that's also part of another perfect square. Isn't that perfect? Everything works perfectly, right? Okay, awesome. Now, what is that supposed to mean? It means that if I call this expression a, you're going to notice that this is also a, and this looks like a squared plus 2a plus 1. And yay, this is a plus 1 quantity squared. Yes, awesome, beautiful. That's why I've been saying this is perfect, right? Okay, awesome. So what I got from here is a perfect square. And why, why is that significant? Because notice that my expression is under the radical. If it's something squared, then I can easily simplify it. That's it. I got the key. Great. So this is what we're going to do. I'm going to take that expression, my x squared. Let me start with that. x squared is equal to 3 root 3 minus root 2. Great. And then I have plus 2. Nice. And then minus 2 times my radical. Awesome. And that is going to be so radical. Okay. Under the radical, what, what do I have? Well, since I call this a, a plus 1 quantity squared is basically root 3 minus root 2 plus 1 squared. In other words, this expression right here is nothing but root 3 minus root 2 plus 1 squared. And we were able to do that by breaking down the numbers a little bit and using our knowledge uh, from algebra, you know, factoring trinomials. Remember how we factor trinomials? You're looking for two numbers whose product is a given number and whose sum is another number, so on and so forth. The x method, in other words. Anyways, so to keep a long story short, my expression inside the radical can be written as square root of 3 minus square root of 2 plus 1 squared. And obviously, this is going to be, this is going to be, a positive quantity. So when I square root it, its square root, something squared square rooted, will be itself, right? Because root 3 minus root 2 is positive, so my expression is positive. So from here, x squared becomes what? 3 root 3 minus root 2 plus 2 minus 2 times the quantity root 3 minus root 2 plus 1. So in other words, square root and the square cancel each other out. Some people just like it that way. That's not very technical and rigorous, but that's okay. Nobody cares, right? So now, x squared it becomes what? 3 root 3 minus root 2 plus 2. Now let's go ahead and distribute to 2. This is the fun part. Minus root 2 root 3 plus 2 root 2 minus 2. And then here, I can kind of cancel out the 2s finally. And then I have 3 root 3 minus 2 root 3. That means just 1 root 3. And I have 2 root 2 minus root 2, which means root 2. So x squared becomes root 3 minus root 2, which means x is what we were trying to simplify, and that becomes the square root of root 3 minus root 2. So my original expression, what I started with, in other words, let me rewrite that, 2 root 3 square root of, square root of 2 root 3 plus 2 minus the square root of root 3 minus root 2 is equal to square root of root 3 plus, actually I made a mistake here, right? That is supposed to be a plus 2. Here we go. Oopsies. Okay, going back and fixing the issue. Yes, this is supposed to be equal to the square root of root 3 plus root 2. So at this point, you probably noticed what I'm going to talk about next, but maybe you haven't. So let's continue. So this brings us to the end of the first method, so let's go ahead and talk about the second method. Okay. Like I said earlier, I like the first method better, but it's just a matter of choice. You guys are going to let me know what you think about it, right? Which one do you like better? That's why I want to present two methods so you can compare and contrast. So I'm trying to simplify this expression right here. What is this equal to? I don't know what it is. So here's what I'm going to do. Remember what I told you at the very beginning. 
A lot of times I said that these expressions will come with their conjugates and then we call it, you know, we set it equal to something and then we square both sides and then we take advantage of conjugates. For example, if I had something like, you know, square root of 5 plus root 3 and then plus the square root of 5 minus root 3, I could just call this x and then square both sides and certain things will cancel out and I would get rid of most radicals and I would get a nice answer, right? But that's not the case here. So I don't like that, but I want to make it that way. So how can I make it that way? Well, here's what we can do. Think about this expression right here. And how about its conjugate? What is its conjugate? Well, its conjugate is this one. Square root of square root of 3, or in other words, square root of root 3 plus root 2. How about we consider an expression like this one? Okay, maybe I will consider something like this, right? Okay. Can I just... Simplify this expression and hopefully get something like that. Let's call this y. And don't ask y again, right? Let's square both sides. We get square root of 3 plus square root of 2 plus square root of 3 minus square root of 2 minus. What's so significant is that when you multiply these two things, you get 2 times 1. That's cool. And this gives you y squared. Root 2 cancels out. From here, you get 2 root 3 minus 2 equals y squared. And y becomes the square of 2 root 3 minus 2. Notice that I didn't get that. I got the minus version. So what does that tell me? Try the plus version. So let's go ahead and try another one. How about we start off with something like this. The square root of root 3 plus root 2 plus the square root of root 3 minus root 2. And let's call this x again. And it's not the same x as before, so don't get confused. If you that confuses you, call this z. Okay, let's go ahead and call... Uh, you know, square both sides here again. This is going to give me a squared plus b squared plus 2ab. As you know, ab is going to be 1, so it's just going to be 1. And here, root 2 is going to cancel out. I get x squared equals 2 root 3 plus 2. Therefore, x equals 2 root 3 plus 2, but square root of that. Now, what is that supposed to mean? I started off with this, right? I started off with something like this, and it equals that. But if you look at my original expression, it was this minus this. So now, if I substitute this expression here, I get square root of root 3 plus root 2 plus square root of root 3 minus root 2 minus the square root of root 3 minus root 2, and these two cancel out, leaving us with the final answer. And this brings us to the end of this video. Thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed both methods. Please let me know. Don't forget to comment, like, and subscribe. I'll see you tomorrow with another video. Until then, be safe, take care, and bye-bye.